Over 40 people are dead as heavy rainfall battered Uttarakhand for a third straight day yesterday, leaving authorities fearing for the lives of many more who may be trapped under debris and in flooded areas. The rains led to scenes of chaos and disaster across the hilly state, with scary visuals emerging of roads and buildings flooded and submerged, bridges destroyed and rivers overflowing. The good news now is the IMD has said the worst is likely over for Uttarakhand. The rain will shift to the east. ज्यादा इम्पैक्ट आपदा का कुमाऊ साइड में आया है नैनीताल हल्द्वानी उधम सिंह नगर चंपावत इस बेल्ट में आया है पानी कम हुआ है और उससे थोड़ा रिलीफ मिला है फिर भी यहाँ काफी काम करने को बाकी है कुछ एरियाज में अभी भी जो है पूरी तरह खुले नहीं हैं यहाँ पे पुलिस और एनडीआरएफ एसडीआरएफ पीएसी जितना लगा सकते हैं उसको लगा करके रिलीफ पहुँचाने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं काफी कई हजार लोगों को हमने हिवेक्वेट भी करवाया है and uh, in kerala i also worry over rain kerala's lessons learned from the 2018 flood were seen in action as shutters to several dams across the state were opened as kerala struggles with excessive rainfall and overflowing reservoirs stay hamari koshi reports today lessons from the 2018 flood tragedy rang out loud Sirens warned people downstream as the shutters of the Cheradoni Dam of the Idiki Reservoir were opened today. Even though the amount of water limited to just five percent compared to then, around 60 families evacuated from low-lying areas around the dam. Shutters to several dams across the state have been opened since Monday. As many reservoirs reached the red alert mark after unusual intense rainfall, a departure of 135 percent from normal rainfall from 1st October till now. Well, the expert advisory group has considered the fact that uh, there has been intense uh, heavy rainfall, uh, particularly in catchment areas, over the last uh, four days. There are orange alerts, the second highest level for Kerala, for possible very heavy rainfall for next two days due to a fresh spell of an easterly wave. In the Vida Nora and the Nandai, the final thing is that there is a side of the Vida. This is a very good thing. We are still in the Vida. 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 There are around 150 relief camps operating across Kerala with more than 4000 families living in them and this is expected to increase in days to come. While many officials are calling the recent weather conditions as unusual for October in Kerala, for the ordinary people all of this seems to be pushing them to the brink of sustenance. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for Indi TV. Political news now in Punjab's former chief minister captain Amrinder Singh has declared he will form a new party and provided that the farmers issue is resolved he says he will consider an alliance with the BJP and break away Akali groups ahead of next year's assembly elections in the state in a series of tweets Mr Singh's media adviser Ravin Thokral quoted him as saying will soon announce the launch of my own political party to serve the interests of Punjab and its people including our farmers who been fighting for their survival for over a year well let's go across now to ghazali and ghazali this is what many had been saying and especially uh, this uh, softening of stand towards the bjp yeah it was a sort of a writing on the wall everybody knew that once he's quitting congress uh, as he has been replaced as the chief minister he will do something be it alignment with the bjp or form his own political party so very soon he is going to launch his political party but when it comes to alignment with bjp he says that only if there is some sort of reapproachment towards the farm laws now uh, the interesting point is whether there is a buzz in the town that maybe farmers will not be spending their diwali near the delhi borders but maybe in their own villages only if if the government is sort of considering to roll back the farm laws so what sort of uh, approach amrinder singh brings on the table because farmers farm union leaders have not been in talks with the government since feb this year when the last round of meet takes took place but the government is also uh, sort of approaching a lot of people to mediate or to sort of pass information or to convey to farm union leaders 
to roll back or to sort of uh, get a, a medieval path or sort of middle path to uh, roll back the farm laws or somehow resolve this in- entire crisis will amrinder singh be able to do that will he bring the union government and farmers on the table and what sort of reapproachment will take place because we have seen that uh, this government when it decides something has never rolled back anything so this would be a person if amrinder singh is instrumental in that then certainly it will be a uh it will be a huge boost up for for a leader like amrinder singh who is not having a platform not having a party as of now so uh, a lot of things depends upon how this farm agitation takes place or how this farm agitation progresses in the coming months and based on that amrinder's political decision will be framed All right, uh, Ghazali. Thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. Now there have been lots of reactions to this announcement, and uh, Punjab Minister Pargat Singh hit out at uh, the former Chief Minister for launching uh, the new party and saying he was open to partnering with the BJP and other like-minded parties after his, uh, his unceremonious exit last month. A close aide of Captain uh, Singh's rival, Navjot Singh Sidhu, Pargat Singh was inducted into the cabinet after a new Congress government took charge in Punjab following a mutiny among MLAs against the former Chief Minister. मैं तो यही गल पहला ही कह दिया कल नहीं है ये बादल परिवार भी ना ही है ये देखो पंजाब जो ये कर रहे हैं जी दे सार् की कट्ठी हो गई है सो इस करके मैं बड़ा ये क्लीयर है भी ये मैं जिथे कि ढाई साल पहला क्या सो बहुते बंदे इस गल मानते नहीं सके हौली हौली हूँ तुम सारे देख लग पे हम तुम सारे क्वेश्चन कर लग एजेंडा ही उतों आता है लागू तो की करना सर लागू एक्चुअली कई बार आप विजुअलाइज नहीं करते बट एक्चुअल गल तो यही सी नवी पार्टी जी बनी हैगी बीजेपी समझो वेरी सून जिम्मे जिम्मे अपनी बनी सी एक टाइम से पी 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 पार्टी में कांग्रेस टीम भी कहती सी वो वित्त मंत्री साहब आप शामिल हो गए भी कुछ समय की गल है In other news now the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear the matter pertaining to violence in Lakhimpur Kheri in Uttar Pradesh in which eight people including four farmers were killed during a farmers protest at the last hearing the Supreme Court had come down heavily on the UP government and had said it was not satisfied with the UP government's actions the Supreme Court said law must take its course against whoever is involved treat the accused the same way we treat other persons in other cases the court had directed the UP government to file a new status report and suggest the alternative alternative agency that can probe the case they said obviously it can't go to the CBI and this was understood as uh, because uh, the junior home minister son is accused of murder in this case Now farmer uh, groups are protesting the new central laws uh, uh, near Delhi have called for reinforcements ahead of a key Supreme Court hearing this week that may mean the end of their year long blockade farmer leaders urge more protesters to join the movement at the borders of Delhi from Punjab Haryana Uttar Pradesh and other states with a chalo Delhi call earlier this month the Supreme Court had said it would examine this uh, on Thursday if the right to protest was absolute and also go into whether farmers have the right to take to the streets when the issue at the core of the protest the three new farm laws is in court the court had sharply questioned the sit in in the wake of the death of eight people including four farmers in violent protests in uttar pradesh on the 3rd of october A Mumbai court is expected to give its decision today on Shah Rukh Khan's son Aryan Khan's bail plea. The 23-year-old was arrested by the Narcotics Control Bureau in Mumbai in the Mumbai Cruise drugs case and is lodged in Arthur Road Central Jail in Mumbai. Now the last hearing which took place on the 14th of October stated that Aryan's bail plea order has been reserved and that the court of judge V V Patil has scheduled the pronouncement of the order on the 20th of October due to the Dashera festival and the weekend along with Aryan Khan uh, his close friend Arbaz Merchant has also been arrested now according to reports the jail authorities have increased security of Aryan Khan and he's been moved to a special barrack and is being monitored by officials while the agency said nothing was recovered from Khan personally his whatsapp chats reveal links with drug peddlers some of them part of an international drug trafficking network Time for us to slip into a short break coming up on the other side Prime Minister Modi will inaugurate the Kushinagar airport today
Welcome back. Well, let's now uh, get to the latest on the Prime Minister's program where he will be inaugurating an airport in uh, Kushinagar. The Prime Minister will inaugurate the Kushinagar International Airport at the site of Lord Buddha's uh, Parinirvana in Uttar Pradesh. The move is aimed at boosting tourism on the Buddhist circuit on the back of three markers for economic development, trade, tourism and technology. The inauguration event is expected to be attended by the ambassadors of at least uh, 10 to 15 countries where Buddhism is practiced and uh, preached more than 100 priests and eight high priests from Sri Lanka, led by the country's uh, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa Sanamal, who is a minister, will also reportedly be present for the inauguration. Uh, the Kushinagar Airport has been built at an estimated cost of 260 crore. Now, India is racing uh, to a billion vaccine doses administered a huge milestone, but India's soon-to-be-achieved vaccination milestone also hides the yawning gap between the number of people who've been fully inoculated and those who've had just one shot. While 51% have received one dose of the vaccine, only 20% of the country is fully vaccinated, a worryingly high gap. Health experts are, say this is a lopsided statistic on a mix of factors. There are many reasons to celebrate this festive season. Very soon, India will complete 100 crore vaccinations. But the government red flagged its new big concern, that a sizable number have not received their second dose. The centre says it has enough doses to cover people waiting for their second dose and also underlined that it can provide extra doses to states, specifically for second dose coverage, if it is needed. States have been asked for their strategies to enhance second dose coverage and urged to focus on the second vaccination dose. However, while the government didn't put a number, there have been some estimates. NDTV reported that in Telangana, 25 lakh people had missed their second dose deadline in the first half of October. The threat is that uh, if some population remain there, which is susceptible for infection, they will continue to have infection and we have long period of you know, the presence of the virus and more chances of mutation. In India, 51% of the total population has taken only one dose, which gives 30 to 50% protection against infection. Only 21% of the population is fully covered. The festive season is well and truly here. Markets are crowding again with people who want to shop for their loved ones. But even as we celebrate the 100 crore vaccinations, we cannot afford to get complacent. Four out of five people are still only partially vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. With Sushil Rathi, Meher Pandey for NDTV. WHO Chief Dr. Tedros uh, tweeted that he had a call uh, with the Health Minister of India to discuss India's ongoing COVID vaccination program, the need for a global uh, pandemic agreement, digital health and traditional medicine. He said we welcome uh, the support to strengthen WHO's uh, inclusiveness via flexible, sustainable financing. He says the minister and I also discussed vaccine equity as well and the issue uh, and various issues, the resumption of AstraZeneca vaccine supplies to COVAX, the co-vaccine emergency use listing process and technology and license sharing through CTAP. And as India's first mRNA vaccine is in advanced stages of clinical trials, Genova Biopharmaceuticals tells NDTV how the vaccine is consistently being peer-reviewed and how India could produce it by the end of this year. As the battle against COVID-19 continues, we of course also talk about vaccines and vaccine preparedness in greater detail. Joining us for an exclusive conversation on perhaps India's first mRNA vaccine is Dr. Sanjay Singh from Genova Pharmaceuticals and the effort and the highlights thereby at the moment. Thank you so much for joining us, sir, and thank you for this interaction. I'd like to begin by asking you, could you take us through the stage at which this vaccine is at the moment? Has it been peer-reviewed? And when can India perhaps get India's first mRNA vaccine? So yes, uh, we are at the latest stage of this vaccine trial. And this program is, has been funded by the Department of Biotechnology. It starts from its inception. So we are continuously get peer reviewed for it. The data is analyzed by the experts, different subject expert groups. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes right, 
and we have a successful trial before the end of the year we expect this vaccine in the market. All right, I'd like to then ask you, what would you decide to call this vaccine? Of course, many are awaiting, like you said, a competition with the likes of Moderna and Pfizer. The Western world has, of course, had those vaccines far more easily available. So what would you be naming this vaccine and how seamless do you see the process to be? So for us, the biggest challenge was that uh, today mRNA vaccines has been most preferred, least controversial and uh, maximum efficacious. So mRNA is the choice, this is future of vaccinology. But to deploy this vaccine in the country like India, it is difficult to create all across the country the infrastructure for ultra refrigeration, which is minus 70 degrees centigrade. We have succeeded in developing this vaccine at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. That is one of the biggest advantage and at present we have, the, the, basically the code word is HGCO19 but hopefully we'll decide what to come as soon as we come closer to the approval process. There have also been increasingly recent concerns about vaccines for children, sir. What are your views on that? Uh, so we are moving ahead with the children protocol and uh, as a scientist, I would like to ensure first the safety of my vaccine in adult, which is going on. And hopefully our next uh, place is the children from uh, 18, 12 to 18 and then 5 to 12, that is the second. And the third target which we are aiming at present is the booster dose. Because what is happening all around the world, that vaccine efficacy went down with time, so you might need to have booster after six months. And this is especially in the old age people as has been recommended globally, and the people with some morbidity, so we are moving into that direction. So those two areas are our main target at present because right. the safety and efficacy of mRNA based vaccine is unprecedented and I hope that we will be able to contribute with other peers into fighting the COVID-19. All right, so of course a fresh hope there, but I'd like to end by asking you, what is your message to those who are still very hesitant, vaccine hesitancy, do you, how do you feel India can battle that? Of course, globally also we have seen there is vaccine hesitancy. You know, your message to those who feel, oh, we'll have our vitamins, or oh, we will have whatever it takes to be healthy, and we will not take the vaccine. So what is your message to those people? So basically to eradicate these kind of diseases which are transmissible, only tool to fight them is the vaccination. We have succeeded in the country and I'm very proud Indian that we have eradicated polio. Polio and which was the misery for millions of children. So similar way we don't want people to suffer because of somebody else's hesitancy. Welcome back. As the economic recovery post-pandemic is underway, now a disturbing trend, the use of social media to unleash a brand of economic terrorism and cancellation against corporates whose advertisements do not echo majoritarian beliefs. Fab India has been forced to withdraw an online advertisement after several BJP leaders didn't think it was Hindu enough. On October 9th, Fab India tweeted this, a promo for a line of clothing for the Festival of Lights called Jashnai Rivaz, or clothing for traditional celebration. But it has been forced to take down the campaign after the latest instance of high-level bigotry. BJP leaders came down hard on one of the biggest Made in India brands, claiming it's an attempt to Muslimize a Hindu festival. BJP's youth wing head and MP Tejasvi Surya complained about the urbramization of Hindu festivals. While C.T. Ravi, BJP's National General Secretary, urged people to find a different outlet. While the BJP's Kapil Mishra tweeted, Time to boycott Fab India, they don't deserve our money. Soon, boycott Fab India was trending on Twitter. Fab India did not respond officially. It was, however, conveyed to NDTV that Jashnai Rivaz was not meant to be Fab India's Diwali collection and that a campaign with the name Jhil Milsi Diwali will soon be announced. Many called out the attacks on Fab India on Twitter. This is not the first time a brand has been targeted over its ad campaign. But Fab India customers ask, what's in a name after all? It's the festive spirit that should be celebrated. I'm a regular Fab India customer and... Um 
what I feel about the recent issue of trolling is that it doesn't really matter what the name is, it, the intention matters and I think the brand had a good intention of mixing cultures. So it should be taken in a positive manner rather than be trolled upon. It's basically a good thing that even the Urdus, I mean the Muslims are also celebrating with us. So it's actually a good thing that they're doing. That's extremely shameful and you know it's very disheartening to see such things that people troll over such petty issues. Uh, just keep us far too time and these are the people who keep doing such thing. I mean how does it matter what the name of the collection is? Look at the collection, if it's good you buy otherwise you don't. The controversy comes almost exactly a year after Tanishq, a popular jewellery brand owned by the Tatas, was abused for their campaign featuring an interfaith baby shower. Tanishq had been forced to apologize for allegedly promoting Love Jihad, but they said it was for the safety of their staff. With Manu Nair in Delhi, Shunakshi Chakravarti, NDTV. And this wasn't uh, the only uh, such uh, incident. Zomato reinstated an employee after sacking her following an outcry on social media. Uh, Zomato sacked a customer service operative after a customer from Tamil Nadu said he was told to learn Hindi when he sought a refund. Hours later, the food delivery app's founder then tweeted that the employee had been reinstated and that the level of intolerance and chill needs to be much higher in the country. Zomato founder Dipinder Goel added, Tamil Nadu, we love you. In other news, now in Barwani district's Rajpur town, a violence erupted during the Eid Milad Un Nabi procession, which was allegedly taken out without any permission. The violence took place when residents of one community objected to the playing of a controversial song by the DJ uh, and music player in the procession. Suddenly, someone from the procession allegedly hurled a shoe on those watching the procession, and subsequently, those forming part of the procession allegedly pelted stones on the police and residents hailing from the other community. The violent mob also damaged shops and houses in the area. At least 10 people, including the local police station in charge and little little girl were hurt in the violence. In adjoining Khargao district, five people were hurt in clashes between two communities in the Bedia town over the removal of a religious flag after the Eid Milad Un Nabi procession. Uh, two cross FIRs have now been registered by the local police on complaints by both sides. If it's a Ram temple in Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh, it's a Lakshmi Narsimha Swami temple in Yadadri in Telangana that's hoping to give competition to the most visited Venkateshwar Swami temple at Tirumala in Andhra Pradesh. This is Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao's dream project to renovate a thousand-year temple at a cost of 1,800 crore rupees. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao inspecting and reviewing works at the renovated Lakshmi Narsimha Swami Temple at Yadadri, 70 kilometers from Hyderabad. The 1,000-year-old temple is all set for a formal reopening to which Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been invited as chief guest. So, March, this is the Antak munde, dada peni mitomit rodo le mundu angkur arpan jarut. I mahasudar cina yaga mana itu buda, ini rodo le munde para mamit. Samprok cina matram, iru bayi ini mitomit rodo na jarut. This is a 1800 crore rupees dream project of Chief Minister K C R. That has transformed a cave shrine on 2,500 square yards into a black granite beauty standing on 14 and a half acres. For five years now, some 500 sculptors and architects have worked to build this according to Agama Shastras using traditional lime and mortar instead of cement and concrete. Chief Minister KCR, as he is popularly known, has never shied away from publicly flaunting his spiritual side, whether it is performing yagnas or making expensive offerings to gods and temples. This time too, during the reopening, there will be a Mahasudarshana Yagna. An entire picturesque temple city spread over 250 acres is being built around the Hilok Temple with a presidential suite, VVIP villas, cottages, marriage halls, multi-level parking for 7,000 vehicles, 
Pushkarni for a holy dip and Kalyanakata for ton shop. The Yadadri Ring Road is being developed at a cost of 143 crore rupees. The hope is that like the richest and most visited Tirmala Balaji Temple at Tirupati in neighboring Andhra Pradesh, Yadadri will earn for Telangana a place on the world spiritual tourism map. With camera person Nagraju, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. Over 40 people are dead as heavy rainfall battered Uttarakhand for a third straight day yesterday, leaving authorities fearing for the lives of many more who may have been trapped and in flooded areas. Several people have been reported missing, sparking concerns that the actual toll uh, could rise. The rains led to scenes of chaos and disaster across the hilly state, with scary visuals emerging of roads and buildings flooded and submerged, uh, bridges destroyed and rivers overflowing. Uh, the good news, however, is the IMD has said the worst is likely over for Uttarakhand and the rains will shift eastwards. Rescue teams at work across Uttarakhand near Badrinath, government workers used an earth mover to save this car from being washed downhill. At least 34 people have died and many are missing and there's been a massive loss of property like this under construction bridge washed away in Champawat. Or this one in use in Haldwani district where frantic appeals to stop a motorist work just in time probably saving his life. The iconic Nenita Lake overflowed after over 50 centimeters of rain in 24 hours, flooding nearby workplaces and homes. The rains have led to scenes of chaos and disaster across the hilly state with scary visuals emerging of roads and buildings flooded and submerged. It wasn't just people who were left stranded. A lone elephant was spotted battling against the rushing flood waters of the Gaula River in Haldwani district. The rainfall has been very unusual for this time of the year and very extreme. In Pori Garhwal, it rained about 10 centimeters, which is 6,000% above normal for the last 24 hours, according to government data. Some hotels like this one were also flooded, showing stranded guests near the Jim Corbett National Park. जो आपदा आई है, उसमें बहुत सारे लोग चले गए हैं। अभी तक 34 लोगों की मृत्यु का हमें समाचार मिला है। या जो भी जिनके घर से कोई भी गए हैं, तो उसमें चार लाख रुपए प्रत्येक मृतक के परिवार को देंगे। the Badrinath National Highway in Chamoli district has been completely blocked due to debris at seven places. And as a precautionary measure, the Badrinath Chardham Yatra has been halted and passengers en route to Badrinath's temple have been stopped at safe places. As heavy rainfall lashes the state and wreaks havoc, all schools remain closed while there is a ban on trekking, mountaineering and camping activities in high altitude areas, including the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve and various forest divisions. This is Parmeshwar Bhava for NDTV. The impact of the Abda is on the Kumau side, Nainital, Haldwa, Neudamshi, Nagar, Champawat, this belt is on the Kumau side. The water is reduced and it has a little relief from it. But there is also a lot of work here. There are also a lot of areas that are not open in some areas. There are also a lot of police and NDRF, SDRF, PSC, who are able to get relief from it. They are able to get relief from it. They are able to get relief from it. We have also evacuated a lot of people to evacuate a lot of people. And from Uttarakhand to Kerala, that also experienced devastating rain and flooding and landslide. Now, Kerala's lessons have been learned from 2018 and they were seen in action as shutters to several dams across the state were opened yesterday as Kerala struggles with excessive rainfall and overflowing reservoirs. Uh, there's an orange alert for Kerala today, which is why it was important to let out the extra water yesterday. Sneha Meri Koshi reports. 
Lessons from the 2018 flood tragedy rang out loud. Sirens warned people downstream as the shutters of the Cheridoni Dam of the Idiki Reservoir were opened. Even though the amount of water limited to just 5% compared to then. Around 60 families evacuated from low-lying areas around the dam. Shutters to several dams across the state have been opened since Monday, as many reservoirs reached the red alert mark after unusual intense rainfall, a departure of 135% from normal rainfall from 1st October till now. The expert advisory group has considered the fact that uh, there has been intense uh, heavy rainfall, uh, particularly in catchment areas over the last uh, four days. There are orange alerts, the second highest level for Kerala, for possible very heavy rainfall for next two days due to a fresh spell of an easterly wave. <laughs> There are around 150 relief camps operating across Kerala with more than 4,000 families living in them and this is expected to increase in days to come. While many officials are calling the recent weather conditions as unusual for October in Kerala, for the ordinary people, all of this seems to be pushing them to the brink of sustenance. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. And on to political news now from Punjab. Punjab's former Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh has declared that he will be forming a new party and provided the farmers' issue is resolved, he will consider an alliance with the BJP and breakaway Akali groups ahead of next year's assembly elections in the state. Now, in a series of tweets, Mr. Singh's media advisor, Ravin Tokral, quoted him as saying, will soon announce the launch of my own political party to serve the interests of Punjab and its people, including our farmers who've been fighting for their survival for over a year. Year. Well, let's go across to Mohammad Ghazali uh, for more details. And Ghazali, this was something that was expected in Punjab. But uh, tell us more about the kind of reactions to this announcement. See, the Congress party has reacted saying that it, they, they knew all this long that Amrinder Singh was getting instructions from BJP to run this government when he was at the helm of affairs for the four, last four and a half years. Cabinet Minister Purgat Singh has reacted yesterday saying that Amrinder Singh is in cahoots with BJP as well as Akali Dal. So this was the first reaction from the Congress party which is in power in Punjab since Amrinder Singh formally has not yet quit the party but he has very uh, clearly said in the past that he will quit Congress and would launch his own party. Now launching his own party and only will ally with BJP if farm issues are resolved, says Amrinder Singh. So that will have to be seen that how the entire agitation which has been going on for the last one year, how the union government and Amrinder Singh try to fix this issue, how to take farmers on board, and then only the later course of action or his impact in polls will be calculated because there is still uncertainty. A lot of parties in the fray for the first time in Punjab polls. Earlier, it used to be a two-party contest between Akali Dal and Congress. Then Aam Admi came into the fray in 2017. But after that, now Amrinder Singh will have his own outfit BJP already split from Akali Dal will have will be fighting alone in the polls. Then you have Congress and Aam Admi Party as well. So who else Amrinder Singh allies with? Because there are many Congress leaders in Punjab who are close to Amrinder Singh. So even that would have to be seen whether they quit Congress and join Amrinder's outfit. Because um, many experts say that uh, we will have to wait till the ticket allocation is done with the Congress party because many who will be rejected or who will not be given the ticket may align with Amrinder or may go with Amrinder's party. But a lot depends upon how Amrinder Singh and the union government, if so, will try to get farmers on board or will try to give some sort of sweetener to farmers ahead of Diwali as it is the buzz in the town that maybe farmers will not be spending this year's Diwali on the highways near Delhi borders, but will be back to their villages. So will the government take a rollback of the laws? That needs to be seen ahead of Punjab polls. All right, uh, Ghazali, thanks so much for joining us with that. So let's take a look at what uh, that Punjab minister, Pargat Singh, had to say on this announcement uh, by Captain Amrinder and also Harsimrat Kaur Badal. 
ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹੀ ਕਹਿਣ ਦਿਆਂ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਇਕੱਲੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗੇ ਇਹ ਬਾਦਲ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਵੀ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਹ 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 ਦੇਖੋ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਇਹ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਦੇਣ ਆ ਉਹ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਇਕੱਠੀ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਹੀ ਆ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਬੜਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਮੈਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਕਿ 2.5 ਸਾਲ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਦੋਂ ਬਹੁਤੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਮੰਨਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀਗੇ ਹੌਲੀ ਹੌਲੀ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਦੇਖਣ ਲੱਗ ਪਏ ਆ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਕਰਨ ਲੱਗ ਏਜੰਡਾ ਹੀ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਲਾਗੂ ਤਾਂ ਕੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਲਾਗੂ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਕਈ ਵਾਰੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਵਿਜੂਅਲਾਈਜ਼ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਬਟ ਐਕਚੁਅਲ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਇਹੀ ਸੀਗੀ In other news now the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear the matter pertaining to the violence in Lakhimpur Kheri in Uttar Pradesh in which eight people including four farmers were killed during a farmers protest during the last hearing the Supreme Court had come down heavily on the UP government over the Lakhimpur violence and had said it was not satisfied with the UP government's actions uh, well let's go across now to Sukirti uh, for more and Sukirti was after the Supreme Court hearing uh, last time that we saw uh, the uh, the junior home minister son being arrested he was accused in this case and uh, today the hearing to take place uh well yes gargi uh, it was indeed uh, the supreme court's uh, strong statements in the last hearing that had led uh, to mr ashish mishra's arrest because the supreme court had said that the law needs to follow its course irrespective of whoever is the accused uh, the supreme court was very unhappy and uh, not satisfied at all with the kind of actions that had been taken by the up government till that point uh, in the last hearing the supreme court had asked the up government to submit a fresh status report and also give its suggestion about which is the alternative agency that could probe this entire case uh one uh, the supreme court uh, was not uh, really in favor of uh, the local sit uh, or uh, the sit which comprised of uh, many of the up police officials them probing the case uh, because there was a level of apprehension that they expressed uh, about involvement of local officials in a high profile case like this and also uh, they had uh, their doubts about the uh, being handed over the case uh, without uh, you know they did not say it in as many words but we all know that uh, mr ashish mishra's father because he is mos home and the cbi comes under his ministry so uh, there are uh, those uh, skepticisms involved uh, due to that uh, reason so uh, both uh, the up police as well as cbi the supreme court was not in favor of but they had said and give us a suggestion about which is the alternative agency that could probe this matter in an independent and a fair manner uh but today when the up government submits its new status report and gives them all the details that so far people have been arrested including the minister's son uh then now all eyes on the supreme court now on whether the court changes its stance All right thanks so much Sukirti for joining us with that and staying uh, with the news of farmers and farmer protests Chalo Delhi uh, farmers have renewed the protest call before a supreme court order now farmer groups protesting the new central laws near Delhi have called in for reinforcements ahead of a key supreme court hearing later this week that may mean the end of the year long blockade Farmer leaders urge more protesters to join the movement at the borders of Delhi from Punjab, Haryana, UP and other states. Earlier this month the Supreme Court had said it would examine uh, this if if the right to protest was absolute and also go into whether farmers have the right to take to the streets when the issue at the core of their protest the three new farm laws is in court. The court sharply questioned the sit-in in the wake of the deaths of eight people including of four farmers during protests in UP on the 3rd of October. News now from Mumbai and a special anti-drug court will decide on bail for Aryan Khan superstar Shahrukh Khan's son who was arrested after a raid by the Narcotics Control Bureau on a cruise ship in Mumbai Aryan Khan is currently in Mumbai's Arthur Road jail and several questions have been raised after after the manner in which the anti-drugs agency has conducted the investigation including links of witnesses to officers and using people with links to the BJP to handle the accused and making informers witnesses in this case let's go across to saurabh uh, now for more and saurabh we're expecting uh, that decision to be announced today and in the last hearing uh, arin khan's lawyers had argued that no drugs were found in his possession 
Absolutely. The arguments have been concluded in the last hearing and the court had reserved its order for today, which means that it will announce its decision on Aryan Khan's bail petition today. That means there can only be two outcomes. One is the court refuses bail, which means then the matter goes to the Bombay High Court and the lawyers again argue his case for bail in the High Court. If the special anti-drugs court here agrees to grant him bail, then of course, uh, if the order comes in time, we might see Aryan Khan walking out of Arthur Road Jail this evening itself. But that again depends on the timing of the order and the time taken to process uh, the order because formalities uh, and jail rules uh, are you know there to ensure that uh, you know the formalities are completed within a certain period of time if it doesn't happen then of course it and if the court grants him bail today then it could be tomorrow but th those are the uh, possibilities that could be the outcome of today's hearing one is that he gets bail or the, he doesn't and then the matter goes to the Bombay High Court and he continues to remain in jail but beyond that, there has, of course, been a lot of political noise on this issue. And that has also resulted from the fact that the NCB's investigation, the Narcotics Control Bureau's investigation, also has been questioned by political parties like the uh, Nationalist Congress Party, uh, which has provided pictures of uh, a man with uh, BJP links uh, handling the accused, informers becoming witnesses, uh, you know, people known for formally to officers also you know, uh, being part of the NCP, uh, uh, NCB operation. So several questions have been lay, uh, raised on the functioning of the agency itself. The uh, Shiv Sena leader and well-known uh, farmers' rights activist Kishore Tiwari has moved the Supreme Court on this matter. But beyond that, also what we've seen is a lot of political noise on the issue. And many have questioned Aryan Khan's continuing jail stay, given the fact that at this point, his lawyers argue nothing was found on him and if at all if at all there is any argument it is one of him being a consumer at best all right uh, Saurabh thanks so much for joining us uh, with that so the court will announce its decision on Aryan Khan's bail plea today with that time for us to slip into a short break coming up on the other side the Prime Minister today will be inaugurating the International Airport at Kushinagar will get you all the details <music> Welcome back. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the Kushinagar International Airport today at the site of Lord Buddha's Pari Nirvana in Uttar Pradesh. Now, this move is very key. It's aimed at boosting tourism on the Buddhist circuit on the back of three markers for economic development, trade, tourism and technology. The inauguration event is expected to be attended by ambassadors of at least a dozen uh, countries where Buddhism is practiced. More than 100 priests and eight high priests from Sri Lanka led by the country's Prime Minister Mahindra Raj. Rajapaksa's son and Minister Namal will also reportedly be there in Kushinagar. The Kushinagar airport has been built at an estimated cost of 260 crore. Now, the High Commission of India in Colombo tweeted, blessed to pay respects to the Buddha's relics and Mahasangha as they and Honorable Rajapaksa Namal depart on the inaugural international flight to Kushinagar. Uh, so, the first flight there coming in from Sri Lanka to this international airport. Now, bad news on the fuel front, fuel on fire and prices have been hiked yet again. This coming after a break of two days, fuel prices have been hiked. And there you can see in Delhi, petrol is at 106.19, diesel at 94.92. In Mumbai, it's the highest. Uh, petrol is going at 112.11, while diesel is 102.89. So fuel prices hiked yet again. Let's take a look at some of the reactions to this. पहले तो 250 का टंगी फुल होता था स्कूटी का एक आज 500 रुपया लग जा रहा है फ्री फुल नहीं हो रहा फ्री फुल नहीं हो पा रहा क्या कहना सरकार को इसमें ध्यान देना चाहिए कि इतना पार नहीं होना चाहिए रोज मर रहा है जो जिंदगी जी रहा है वो कैसे जिएंगे हम लोग इससे आदमी तो सही मर जाएंगे तेल बढ़ते रहेंगे तो हर दिन जो है तेल का रेट जो बढ़ते जा रहा है ये हम लोग को काफी दिक्कत का सामना करना पड़ रहा है महंगाई तो एकदम आसमान छू रही है इधर गैस का इधर पेट्रोल का 
बाकी तेल वगैरह खाने पीने का भी सब चीज का महंगाई बढ़ रहा है मेरे देश से तेल दूसरा देश खरीद करके अपने यहाँ कम रेट में बेच रहा है बोलिए तो कहाँ का नियम है कहाँ का सिस्टम है हमसे पेट्रोल खरीदेगा दूसरा देश वाला और वो अपने यहाँ सस्ता में बेच रहा है मेरे यहाँ हमारा चीज हमको ही कम मिल रहा है हम लोग अब साइकिलिंग करेंगे गाड़ी व्हीकल सब रख देना होगा साइकिलिंग करेंगे बॉडी बिल्डर हो जाएंगे All right some of the reactions to those rising fuel prices that's really breaking the back of the common man time for us to slip into a short break coming up on the other side India racing uh, to the billion dose of the vaccine but concerns over the disparity between people who got two doses and just one dose Welcome back India soon going to hit a massive landmark in the vaccination program administering a billion doses of the vaccine it could either be today evening or tomorrow but the vaccination milestone hides the yawning gap between the number of people who've been fully inoculated and those that have received just one shot while 51% have received one dose only 20% of the country is fully vaccinated a worrying high gap health experts pin this lopsided statistic on a mix of factors There are many reasons to celebrate this festive season. Very soon India will complete 100 crore vaccinations. But the government red flagged its new big concern that a sizable number have not received their second dose. The center says it has enough doses to cover people waiting for their second dose and also underline that it can provide extra doses to states specifically for second dose coverage if it is needed. States have been asked for their strategies to enhance second dose coverage and urged to focus on the second vaccination dose. However, while the government didn't put a number, there have been some estimates. NDTV reported that in Telangana, 25 lakh people had missed their second dose deadline in the first half of October. The threat is that uh, if some population remain there, which is susceptible for infection. they will continue to have infection and we have long period of you know the presence of the virus and more chances of mutation in india 51% of the total population has taken only one dose which gives 30 to 50% protection against infection only 21% of the population is fully covered the festive season is well and truly here markets are crowding again with people who want to shop for their loved ones but even as we celebrate the 100 crore vaccinations we cannot afford to get complacent four out of five people are still only partially vaccinated or not vaccinated at all with sushil rathi meher pandey for nd tv Now, WHO chief Dr. Tedros tweeted the, that he had a call with India's health minister Mansukh Mandavia to discuss India's ongoing COVID vaccination program, the need for a global uh, pandemic agreement, digital health, and traditional medicine. He well, he said, we welcome the support to strengthen uh, WHO's inclusive, via flexible, sustainable financing. The minister and I also discussed vaccine equity issues, uh, the re- resumption of AstraZeneca vaccine supplies to Covax, the Covax and emergency use listing. Pro- process and technology and license sharing through CETA Now as India's the first mRNA vaccine is in advanced stages of clinical trials Genova Biopharmaceuticals tells NDTV how the vaccine is consistently being peer reviewed and how India could produce it by the end of this year as the battle against covid-19 continues we of course also talk about vaccines and vaccine preparedness in greater detail joining us for an exclusive conversation on perhaps india's first mrna vaccine is dr sanjay singh from genova pharmaceuticals and the effort and the highlights thereby at the moment thank you so much for joining us sir and thank you for this interaction i'd like to begin by asking you could you take us through the stage at which this vaccine is at the moment has it been peer reviewed and when can india perhaps get india's first mrna vaccine so yes uh, we are at the late stage of this vaccine trial and this program is has been funded by the department of biotechnology in start from its inception so we are continuously get peer reviewed for it 
the data is analyzed by the experts, different subject expert groups. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes right, and we have a successful trial before the end of the year we expect this vaccine in the market all right i'd like to then ask you what would you decide to call this vaccine of course many are awaiting like you said a competition with the likes of moderna and pfizer the western world has of course had those vaccines far more easily available so what would you be naming this vaccine and how seamless do you see the process to be so for us the biggest challenge was that uh, today mrna vaccines has been most preferred, least controversial, and uh, maximum efficacious. So mRNA is the choice. This is future of technology. But to deploy this vaccine in the country like India, it is difficult to create all across the country the infrastructure for ultra refrigeration, which is minus 70 degrees centigrade. We have succeeded in developing this vaccine at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. That is one of the biggest advantage, and at present we have we, the, basically the code word is HGCO19, but hopefully we'll decide what to come as soon as we come closer to the approval process. There have also been increasingly recent concerns about vaccines for children, sir. What are your views on that? Uh, so we are moving ahead with the children protocol, and uh, as a scientist, I would like to ensure first the safety of my vaccine in adult, which is going on. And hopefully our next uh, place is the children from uh, 18, 12 to 18 and then 5 to 12. That is the second. And the third target which we are aiming at present is the booster dose. Because what is happening all around the world that vaccine efficacy went down with time. So you might need to have booster after six months. And this is especially in the old age people as has been recommended globally and the people with some morbidity. So we are moving into that direction. So those two areas are our main target at present. Because right. the safety and efficacy of mRNA-based vaccine is unprecedented. And I hope that we will be able to contribute with other peers into fighting the COVID-19. All right, so of course a fresh hope there, but I'd like to end by asking you, what is your message to those who are still very hesitant, vaccine hesitancy? Do you, how do you feel India can battle that? Of course, globally also we have seen there is vaccine hesitancy. You know, your message to those who feel, oh, we'll have our vitamins, or oh, we will have whatever it takes to be healthy, and we will not take the vaccine. So what is your message to those people? So basically to eradicate these kind of diseases which are transmissible, only tool to fight them is the vaccination. We have succeeded in the country, and I'm very proud Indian that we have eradicated polio. Polio, and which is the misery for millions of children. So similar way, we don't want people to suffer because of somebody else's hesitancy. In other news now, the U.S. has reacted to the violence in Bangladesh and condemned the attack on minority Hindus over there. The State Department spokesperson Ed Price has said we condemn the recent violent attacks on Hindu temples and businesses in Bangladesh during the Durga Puja celebrations. Our thoughts are with the Hindu community as we urge authorities to investigate fully freedom of religion or belief is a human right. The Office of International Religious Freedom also said we are appalled by the recent reports of deadly attacks on the Hindu community in Bangladesh. All including members of religious minority groups have the right to worship freely without threats of violence or intimidation. The International Monetary Fund Chief Economist Geeta Gopinath will be leaving her post and return to Harvard University's Economics Department in January. The fund announced the spokesperson said uh, Geeta Gopinath is returning to Harvard in January as planned when her public service leave ends. The search for a successor will begin shortly. In other news, if it is a Ram temple at Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh, it's a Lakshmi Nar Narsimha Swami temple in Yadidri in Telangana that is hoping to give competition to the most visited Venkateshwar Swami temple at Tirumala in Andhra Pradesh. Now, this is Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao's dream project to renovate a thousand-year temple at a cost of 1,800 crore rupees. KCR has invited Prime Minister Narendra Modi to be the chief guest at the reopening. Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao inspecting and reviewing works at the renovated Lakshmi Narsimha Swami Temple at Yadadri, 70 kilometers from Hyderabad. 
The 1,000 year old temple is all set for a formal reopening to which Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been invited as chief guest. So, March lo, this is a 1800 crore rupees dream project of Chief Minister KCR that has transformed a cave shrine on 2500 square yards into a black granite beauty standing on 14 and a half acres. For five years now, some 500 sculptors and architects have worked to build this according to Agama Shastras using traditional lime and mortar instead of cement and concrete. Chief Minister KCR as he is popularly known has never shied away from publicly flaunting his spiritual side, whether it is performing yagnas or making expensive offerings to gods and temples. This time too, during the reopening, there will be a Mahasudarshana Yajna. An entire picturesque temple city spread over 250 acres is being built around the Hilok temple. With a presidential suite, VVIP villas, cottages, marriage halls, multi-level parking for 7,000 vehicles, Pushkarni for a holy dip and Kalyanakata for ton shop. The Yadadri ring road is being developed at a cost of 143 crore rupees. The hope is that like the richest and most visited Tirmala Balaji temple at Tirupati in neighboring Andhra Pradesh, Yadadri will earn for Telangana a place on the world spiritual tourism map. With camera person Nagraju, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. Well, let's now go across to where the Prime Minister is addressing a joint conference of the CVC and CBI. Trust or technology पर विशेष बल दिया गया है। आज देश में जो सरकार है, वो देश के नागरिकों पर ट्रस्ट करती है, उन्हें संकाय की नजर से नहीं देखती है। इस भरोसे ने भी प्रस्ताचार के अनेकों रास्ते बंद किया है, इसलिए दस्तावेजों की वेरिफिकेशन के लेयर्स को हटाकर करप्शन और अनावश्यक परेशान परेशानी से बचाने का रास्ता बनाया है डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी से जन्म प्रमाण पत्र से लेकर पेंशन के लिए जरूरी जीवन प्रमाण पत्र तक सैकड़ों सुविधाएं बिना बिचौलियों के डिलीवर की जा रही है ग्रुप सी और ग्रुप डी की भर्तियों से इंटरव्यू खत्म किया तो गरीब और मिडिल क्लास को करप्शन के दबाव से मुक्ति मिली है गैस सिलेंडर की बुकिंग से लेकर टैक्स से जुड़ी प्रक्रियाओं तक ऑनलाइन और फेसलेस प्रक्रियाएं उन लंबी लाइनों से मुक्ति दे रही हैं जो प्रस्ताचार का बहुत बड़ा जरिया रही है साथियों ट्रस्ट और टेक्नोलॉजी से एफिशिएंट गवर्नेंस और ईज ऑफ बीइंग बिजनेस पर क्या असर हुआ है ये आप सभी भली भांति जानते हैं परमिशन और कंप्लायंस के नाम पर बिजनेस को शुरू करने और बंद करने के नाम पर बैंकों से लोन लेने या लोन को रफा दफा करने को लेकर जो कुछ भी अतीत में हुआ है जो देश को नुकसान हुआ है उसे अब ठीक किया जा रहा है बीते सालों में सैकड़ों ऐसे पुराने कानूनों के जाल को हमने साफ किया है और आज की चुनौतियों को देखते हुए सख्त नए कानून भी देश को दिए हैं हजारों कंप्लायंस और भांति भांति के एनओसी तरह तरह की परमिशंस के नाम पर 
करप्शन का कैसा खेल चलता था ये आपसे बेहतर कौन जानता है बीते सालों में हजारों कंप्लायसेस खत्म किए जा चुके हैं और आने वाले समय में ऐसे हजारों कंप्लायसेस और खत्म करने का इरादा है अधिकतर परमिशंस को फेसलेस किया जा चुका है और सेल्फ एसेसमेंट सेल्फ डिक्लेरेशन जैसी प्रक्रियाओं को बिजनेस के लिए भी प्रोत्साहित किया जा रहा है जैम यानी गवर्नमेंट ई मार्केट प्लेस की वजह से सरकारी खरीद और ई टेंडरिंग में पारदर्शिता आई है उलझने कम हुई है डिजिटल फुटप्रिंट ज्यादा से ज्यादा होने से इन्वेस्टिगेशन भी ज्यादा आसान और सुविधाजनक हो रहे हैं हाल में लॉन्च किया गया पीएम गतिशक्ति नेशनल मास्टर प्लान इससे भी डिसीजन मेकिंग से जुड़ी अनेक मुश्किलें समाप्त होने वाली है तोड़ भी अपराधी मानसिकता वाले ढूंढी लेते हैं मजबूत डिजिटल गवर्नेंस के साथ साइबर क्राइम और साइबर फ्रॉड भी एक बहुत बड़ी चुनौती बनती जा रही है मुझे विश्वास है कि आप सभी एक्सपर्ट्स आने वाले दिनों में इन चुनौतियों पर गंभीरता से मंथन करेंगे एक और आग्रह मैंने 15 अगस्त को लाल किले से भी सरकारी विभागों के उसके नियमों और प्रक्रियाओं की समीक्षा को लेकर किया था मैं सीबीसी और सीबीआई सहित सभी एंटी करप्शन संस्थाओं और संस्थाओं से भी कहूंगा कि आपके यहां जो दशकों से चली आ रही ऐसी प्रक्रियाएं हैं जो नए भारत की नई सोच के आड़े आती है उनको हटाया जाए नए भारत की नई सोच और नए संकल्पों के लिए इससे बेहतर समय और क्या हो सकता है देश आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव मना रहा है आप भी इस महायज्ञ में अपने प्रयासों के साथ जुड़ जाइए आप वो लोग हैं जिन्हें सिस्टम की बारीकियां ये भी पता है और वो कमियां भी पता है जहां से भ्रष्टाचार पनपता है करप्शन के लिए जीरो टॉलरेंस की न्यू इंडिया की नीति को आपको दिनों दिन मजबूत बनाना है आप इस महामंथन के दौरान भी इस प्रकार की प्रक्रियाओं और कानूनों पर चर्चा करेंगे आप कानूनों की इस तरह लागू करेंगे कि गरीब सिस्टम के करीब आए और भ्रष्टाचारी एक एक कर सिस्टम से बाहर हो ये बहुत बड़ी देश सेवा होगी आजादी के अमृत काल में करप्शन मुक्त समाज के निर्माण के लिए आप इनोवेशंस के साथ आगे बढ़ेंगे इसी कामना के साथ आपको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद